Hello! Today we're going to learn to understand focal length using nothing more than two pieces of spaghetti. Here we go. So today we want to understand focal length and to do so we're going to need nothing more than two pieces of spaghetti. As always, my videos are brought to you by Camera Lessons Online, where I specialize in creating educational materials for photography, from books to downloadable uh, pamphlets to my four-hour introduction to photography course. I hope that you check it out. So we're going to understand focal length. And focal length is something that confuses new photographers and even more seasoned photographers quite a bit because it's uh, measured in a strange way, specifically in a distance, uh, and yet it seems to change the way that we view the world through the lens. Uh, it's also oftentimes misunderstood as having something to do with the distance to subject, and lenses are not thought about in terms of distance to subject. So how do we really think about focal length? Well, I first want you to imagine what a lens is doing. We have light, and light's going to finally come into our lens. And what's going to happen is it's going to slowly converge down, and then once it converges, it's going to spread back out. Now the point of convergence, we call that the nodal point. So the distance from nodal point to sensor, that is our focal length. And this is the reason why it's measured in a distance, millimeters in this particular case. So I want you to think about what this is going to look like. Let's say that I have the nodal point and I have the sensor, I have some distance in between, and I have a sensor of some particular size. So the light has to spread outward, it has to hit the sensor on either side, and I have some nodal point at some distance. Now take a look at the angle that the light spreads outward. Right? As the nodal point gets closer to the sensor, look what's happening to the angle of view. It's getting wider. So when I have a smaller focal length, the nodal point is moving closer to the sensor, and that by definition is a wider angle of view. If I take that nodal point and I move it farther away, I get a more acute angle of view, which we oftentimes describe as a telephoto focal length. Uh, for this reason, I've always thought that wide angle lenses were appropriately named, and telephoto was not. Telephoto lenses should be called acute angle lenses. Anyway, now I want you to look at what happens if I keep the same focal length, but I change the size of the sensor. Perhaps I'm going from an APS-C sensor to a full frame sensor. Did you see what happened there? As I moved the sensor size larger and kept the same focal length, the angle of view got wider. It had to, because I have to spread it wider to hit a larger sized sensor. This is the reason why any given focal length that you have is a wider field of view on the larger sensor cameras that you might shoot them on. So there are two factors to angle of view, the actual sensor size and then the distance from the sensor to the nodal point. Now why don't we just label lenses as angle of view? That is the more accurate way to think about them. Well the reason is, realistically, I can have one lens and put it onto cameras of two different sensor sizes. As a result, that one focal length might produce two different angles of view. And so the one thing that does not change in a lens is the distance of nodal point to sensor. As a result, we need to think about lenses as angle of view, but we can't label them that way. Now, once we think about lenses as angles of view, we start to really understand what our lens is doing. When I shoot at a more acute angle, things that are farther away are now a larger percentage of the frame, making it look as if they are closer. That's the trick of telephoto lenses. But it also affects the background behind the subject. As a result, when you shoot telephoto, you get less background. This is the reason in the studio I am so keen on shooting as telephoto as I can get away with, because I have less background to work with. I don't need to light a large background with a wide angle if I can light less background with a more telephoto focal length. If I'm shooting with a wide angle, I'm going to get a lot of background and I'm going to stretch my background farther away from me. As a result, when shooting landscape, I want to take objects and place them in the foreground to anchor the shot. Also, if I shoot at an angle of view wider than human eyesight, I'm stretching reality in relationship to the way human beings see the world. 
and as a result, people up close to the lens are going to seem as if they've gained weight. That's where the whole camera adds 10 pounds thing comes from, is shooting wider angles of view than human eyesight. Anyway, understanding something about angle of view is going to make you a more thoughtful photographer. I'm going to show you a chart that uh, kind of converts a specific focal length to a specific angle of view on different sensor sizes, but this is also information that's readily uh, and easily able to find on the internet. I just also wanted to show it to you. I hope that explains something about lenses and angles of view and makes shooting with different lenses something that makes more sense to you. As always, I hope that you like and subscribe. It's free, you knew that, and I thank you so much for taking your time to watch. I'll see you next time.